First Republic Bank is down big. I went in the last Friday after the morning show and I said, I can't wait to see what bank doesn't exist on Monday. And Credit Suisse was the bank today. This is exactly what happened in 2008. So we're going to find out here, is this some type of contagion effect? But right now, First Republic is down 30%. It was down 40% at one point. And just when I walked in the studio, this was a 26%. So it was dropped 4% in a matter of a couple of minutes. This is from a downgrade that was from s and P Global. So just, just a little bit of a downgrade from them. Now, look at this. This is what happened with First Republic. Remember, not a lot of people were talking about this. They wanted some type of bailout situation, and the banks came in and did it. JP Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, all piled together money and gave them the $30 billion that they needed. That was very exciting. It rallied up the stock, and then this came out with this downgrade. Now, they have seen outflows of $70 billion this year. So it's another one of these smaller size banks that is seeing these ridiculous outflows. And where are they going? They're going to these big guys. They're going to the big banks. There is a lot of fear out there. Now the question becomes, how are your deposits? Are your deposits going to be okay? Let's recap what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. Remember guys, Silicon Valley Bank was the first one. They were in a very interesting situation. Why did they go down? So they were basically taking short-term assets and going into long-term treasuries. And that's a fine thing to do. A lot of banks do that. The difference is, and this is economics 101, this is banking 101, you need to hedge your bets because you're buying, you're buying these things at extremely low rates. Say you're buying them in 2020, let's call it 1.5 to 2%, okay? That's where you're buying your, your long-term treasuries. If interest rates start to spike, and I assume that they didn't think that interest rates were going to spike like they did, your value of those treasuries, bonds, whatever, start to fall greatly. Now, what you can do is you can sell swaps. You're fixed at this rate. What you can do with a swap is go buy a variable rate that's going to float. And as those things float, well, you can get it up here at 3%. Your unrealized losses are not that bad. They had significant unrealized losses. Their bonds were basically worthless. And people found that out. And that's when the run on the bank happened. They didn't have enough liquidity to keep everything going. So in a situation like that, the question then comes to, to the table of, is this a contagion effect? Contagion is happening right now. You saw it with Signature Bank. That was the next one to go. Very similar situation. So there were $42 billion of outflows from SVB dating in the couple of days prior to the FDIC taking over. Then depositors were wondering, well, where's all my money? Because there were billions and billions of dollars out there. Remember, up until 2008, your level of FDIC insurance was $100,000. We all hear 250 nowadays and we say, hey, that's great. But we don't remember that just a few years ago, really in the grand scheme of things, not many years ago, this was $100,000. When the financial crisis happened, this thing got increased to $250,000. And that's where we're sitting now. Now, when this all happened with Signature and SVB, this number kind of went out the window because Janet Yellen, Jerome Powell, they got together and they said, we're going to guarantee whatever the amount is. Then Janet Yellen went to the Senate Banking Committee and she started test not testifying, but speaking and saying what's happening. And the question was asked, are all deposits and all banks going to be covered the same way that it was with SB SVB where this basically went out the window and she said no. And that is what sparked even more contagion effect through the banking system. Now guys, remember, there has never been money that was not covered by FDIC insurance. So if your cash is spread out or your deposits are spread out and not in securities, you are fine. You are covered up to that $250,000 level. The question is, when you get over that 250, dollars what exactly is going to happen? If you are in stocks or you are in bonds or you are in 90-day treasuries, those are securities. Those are, that is not cash that's sitting there. The only thing at risk is the cash that's sitting in account. So if you have it diversified throughout all different accounts, if you're hitting that 250 dollars level, you're going to be fine. Now, Credit Suisse. This is the next thing that happened. And this was the one, I was not expecting this bank to not exist today. This is one of the biggest banks out there. I mean, this is always, always in the news. And they needed a $54 billion injection of cash. And they, could, they needed to get it from Saudi Arabia. That's who their big 
funder was. But there were some regulatory limits where they had already had 9.9%. They couldn't go over some 10%, 10% regulatory threshold. They couldn't get the money from them. The National Bank of Switzerland came in, said that they were going to give them the money. Okay, that was, that was all great. Then we wake up. I'm sorry, we didn't wake up. We were, I was sitting last night at dinner, and I start getting all these pings on my phone that UBS is coming in and taking them over. It was absolutely unbelievable to see these prices that were happening. So now Credit Suisse is no more. Let's see what happened with them. This is an emergency bailout. Not really bailout. This is an emergency purchase. The CEO of UBS basically said, let's be clear, as far as Credit Suisse is concerned, this is an emergency rescue. We aren't happy to go in. We aren't happy to buy these guys. This is just what we have to do because UBS did have a lot of play going on at Credit Suisse. So they said that they were going to move fast. They were going to wind down Credit Suisse's investment. And I think that the most funny part about this is Credit Suisse declined to comment. Chairman Alex Lehman, does it get any more ironic than that? His last name is Lehman, Lehman Brothers. So that's what's happening with that. Guys, this is where you start to continue to get that contagion. I don't think it's over. I've read from different banks, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, that the contagion effect is over. I'm sorry, it's not. The, the speed at which people can pull money out of banks today and move money out of banks, JP Morgan had to shut down their system because they had so many accounts being opened last week that they couldn't, they couldn't keep up with it. People are scared. People are going to the big banks. They're going to JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America because of fear. Those are the ones that are truly, truly too big to fail right now. So let's get back to this FDIC insurance real quick. Right now, there are bank deposits in this country of $9 trillion. The FDIC has about $125 billion to cover that. So I had to just pause myself when I read that stat and said, oh boy, but we'll see what happens going forward. That brings us to what I was saying about Janet Yellen. Let's watch this clip of Janet Yellen speaking, and I want to kind of dig a little bit deeper because I've only read it. I haven't heard her. I don't have time. I need to be able to drill on a couple of things. Let me start with some of the banking issues we're dealing with on it. Will the deposits in every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of their size, be fully insured now? Are they fully recovered? Every bank, every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of the size of the deposit, will they get the same treatment that SVBP just got or Signature Bank just got? A bank only gets that treatment if a majority of the FDIC board, a supermajority, a supermajority of the Fed board, and I, in consultation with the president, determine that the failure to protect uninsured depositors would create systemic risk and significant economic and financial consequences. Okay, so basically what she's saying here is that if they deem that there's going to be financial contagion through the markets, like the, I would say that Silicon Valley Bank and Signature going down did send contagion through the markets because that was on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday, if you guys don't remember, I can't remember the date of last Monday, maybe the 13th, you had Charles Schwab that was down 20 plus percent. Key Bank, which is a smaller regional bank, down 30% in some cases. And if you look at KRE, which is the regional S&P ETF, that was down significantly, 10, 13, 14% for an ETF. So I guess they can make the argument here, but at what point do you draw the line? I mean, fear and contagion is pure subjectivity. And I think that's where a lot of people are coming in and saying, well, now it's just an unlimited amount because they can basically say that, yeah, no matter who's going out of business, who can't grant their deposits over 250000 where are we going to go with I, I just don't like this stuff. <laughs> So what is and your we plan? Made that determination. Right. right. So so what is your banks. plan to keep large depositors from moving their funds out of community banks into the big banks? Can't stop them. We have seen the mergers of banks over the past decade. I'm concerned you're about to accelerate that yes. by encouraging anyone who has a large deposit in a community bank to say we're not going to make you whole. Correct. But if you go to one of our preferred banks we will make you whole. Preferred banks, meaning one of the big, the big, I call it big eight. It's JP Morgan, Citigroup, uh, Wells Fargo, et cetera. That point. Um, look, I mean, we're, that's certainly not something that we're encouraging. Not a very confident answer. 
right now. That is happening because depositors are concerned about the bank failures that have happened and whether or not other banks could also um, no, it, it, it's happening and because it's, you're fully insured no matter what the amount is. Correct. If you're in a big bank, correct. you're not fully insured if you're in a community bank. Well, you're not fully insured. You are not, technically, you are not fully insured at a big bank. The same rules apply. They're just, his point is in saying that you bailed out these regional banks, these smaller banks, you are probably going to bail out a JP Morgan, a Bank of America, if necessary. Not, I need to stop saying the word bailout. You are going to back the, their deposits that are insured, that, that are over the insurance level of 250000 And You, the you big, were at signature, the, and the it, big, was, it just barely met that threshold. You were at signature. Well, we this guy's good. felt that there was a serious risk of contagion that could have brought down and triggered runs on many banks um, and... That something, given that our judgment is that the banking system overall is safe and sound, um, depositors safe should sound. have confidence in the system, and we took these actions. So there's a special assessment that's been done on community banks in my state and all banks across the country. Was there any discussion that that special assessment would only apply to the larger banks, or was it always assumed the special assessment would cover every Across bank, including rural banks in my state. Um, I, I think I, I'm not certain what the rules are around that. Um, I think they're flying by the seat of their pants. The That's what they're doing. They're flying by the seat of their pants right now. You could tell in the questioning that she has no idea. I mean, the guy's pressing her and she doesn't know. I don't think they know. But if I had to guess, this administration would bail out everyone. That's what I think. So, guys, inflows into banks. I'm going to look at some notes right here. There have been $200 billion in assets from small banks into the largest five banks in this country. And that's happened just in the beginning of this year. So that's one indication of where a lot of people's minds are, okay? Secondly, $8.8 billion has left Charles Schwab. And the reason that I say that is I'm a Schwab customer. And I was just telling Tim, it has come across my mind do I want to leave Schwab and go into one of these bigger banks because of everything that Janet Yellen is saying right here? I think that those are the ones with the most security. So it's just a thought. I'm not saying panic. I'm not saying I'm right. I have no idea. It's just a thought that I have had because it's not in one of those top five, 10 banks. In 1994, there were 10,000 banks in this country. Today, there's 4,237. So we have seen consolidation before. I do think that banks are going to start buying other banks. I think that maybe three banks will get together. They'll all join. One of them will be the CEO. Two, others will, two, the two other CEOs will get their golden parachutes. They will go away. That is going to be one way to consolidate down banks. That makes things easier to nationalize. We are one of the few, few, few countries that has this many banks. Most of most every other country has 10 to 15 banks. This makes it easier to nationalize. The less banks you have, the easier it is to combine them. Like I just said, we are one of the few countries that does not have nationalized banks. Now, there's two sides of the coin here. One side of the coin. You probably don't have to worry about situations like this because they are going to be so controlled that it's really not going to, there's not going to be a financial crisis, a, a banking system crisis, because they are so controlled and so monitored. I don't think that we'll really see those anymore. Other side of the coin, governments controlling these things. And from a user perspective, I'm not even talking about from a government owning banks kind of thing, controlling the system more than they already do. This is from a user perspective. I don't like these quote unquote monopolies. I think user experiences will go down. Trading platforms will get worse. Investing platforms will get worse. That is something that is not going to be good because there's not competition out there. Now, something else that I wanted to slip in there. A lot of people are saying, you know, gold prices are spiking right now and Bitcoin prices are spiking and Bitcoin is the ultimate hedge now because uh, this is safe and not regulated. Well, a little tidbit here. President Biden has done an executive order on digital assets, and it's very heavily rumored now that a Fed coin is going to come out this year. So I am telling you guys, if there is a Fed coin, there will be no more Bitcoin the way that it exists now. There will be no more Dogecoin or whatever coins are still in existence. 
It ain't going to happen. The Fed has come up with their own digital currency, more than the U.S. dollar already is, and they are going to say, you want a digital currency? You want a cryptocurrency? Here's your cryptocurrency. What could that do to the market? Well, I think that that's going to do a lot to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. That's just my personal opinion, and I haven't been saying it for a very long time. So guys, if you like videos like this, I appreciate you listening. Please subscribe to the channel. We're going to do a lot more of this with the Federal Reserve coming out with their interest rate hikes, a lot more banking stuff. Contagion is not over. Be patient out there. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.